Welcome to the 8th episode of Italian Politician of the Week. I am Ipernik and I hope you enjoyed last month's episodes even though I skipped a week. I think that it's going to be the norm from now on. Three politicians instead of four is much more comfortable for me. But that doesn't mean you will not get a video that Friday, so just stay tuned. Today we're going to talk about a big one, Vincenzo De Luca, former mayor of Salerno and current president of the region of Campania. He is a very controversial and complicated figure, so I I'm sure you will find him interesting. Before we start, remember to like, subscribe and comment on the video what you think about him and maybe even join the Discord if you feel like it. Last thing before we start, De Luca has been in politics for a very long time and in no way I can talk about everything he did in a few minutes, so I'm going to be very superficial in certain areas. Also, he is no way related to Cateno De Luca, the mayor of Messina we talked about last month. Finally, let's start. Vincenzo De Luca was born in 1949 in Basilicata. When he was a kid he moved to Salerno, Campania, where he graduated in philosophy. Then in the 70s he joined the Italian Communist Party, which disbanded in the 90s. The Italian Communist Party, contrary to its misleading name, was actually composed mostly by Euro-Communists, who were essentially social democrats. Many famous Italian Communists in fact are often put in the lib-left quadrant when compared to international standards, people like Berlinguer for example. De Luca was a bit of an exception however, his supporters called him professor due to his degree and past experience as an high school teacher. However, most of the party actually called him Pol Pot. This was due to his very authoritarian views. One could say De Luca was ironically one of the only communists in the Italian Communist Party. That would be funny to point out, but not as precise. This brings us to his political compass. Vincenzo De Luca is a classical statist. He is a follower of Hobbes' political doctrine, which means he believes in a strong state able to provide for its citizens. He is also a follower of justizionalismo, like Alfonso Bonafede. However, he is also very green when it comes to economics and social issues. Due to this, I would argue that he is very compatible to other tamer communist leaders, such as Castro or Ho Chi Minh, rather than Stalin or that guy slapping the table with a shoe. De Luca is currently in the Democratic Party and many would describe him as the black sheep of the group, both for its views and for his attitude towards many of its members. Let us talk about some of the things he's famous for. De Luca was mayor of Salerno from 1993 up until 2015 and many would consider his four terms as very successful. When he was elected mayor of Salerno, the city was in a terrible place. Its previous mayor was forced to step down for corruption and the city was in an awful state of disrepair. De Luca is credited for restoring Salerno to its former beauty. Tourism increased and so did business passing through the city. He also promoted recycling and made the city a lot cleaner both in terms of hygiene and in terms of architecture. However, what didn't improve was criminality. In fact, organized crime was still a big problem in Salerno. De Luca claims to always have been fighting against the Camorra, though he has been accused many times of working in collaboration with many mafiosos. He has also been in trouble for nepotism, abuse of power and negligence. Boys will be boys. In 2015, he was elected president of Campania, a position he still occupies to this day. He promised he would fix criminal build new hospitals, improve trash disposing facilities and add ways of transport around the region. Unfortunately, very few of these things actually happened. There was a small increase in the GDP and the number of public buses in cities, but that is mostly due to the economic policies done by the previous president Stefano Caldoro and the mayors of big cities respectively. One thing he actually was able to improve was the trash collecting facilities. In fact, Campania is one of the best regions when it comes to recycling, though a lot of unrecycled trash that was accumulated over the decade is still waiting to be dealt with. As you can imagine, De Luca was in charge of the region during the corona pandemic and since he knew the healthcare system he promised to fix couldn't handle a global crisis, he imposed the harshest restrictions on movement in the country, even when the cases were very few. He banned delivery services of any kind, from packages to pizzas. Regardless, many attribute Campania's very low numbers to De Luca and for that reason he has a very big following. He is also known for cracking jokes and for that reason he became famous all over Italy. Let me show you some clips. Ma come è possibile? Chiudiamo i parchi pubblici, chiudiamo i bar, chiudiamo i pub, poi è possibile passeggiare. Questa è un'idiozia. Non si può camminare per strada senza ragione motivata. Ti trovo a passeggiare sul lungomare, ti trovo stravaccato sulla panchina, ti obbligo a questo punto 
a stare in quarantena per 15 giorni. Quelli che volevano essere lieti dieci giorni fa, adesso se ne sono andati lietamente negli ospedali. A volte sembra di avere a che fare con persone che sembrano ragazzini alla prima comunione. Il cervello, la testa, serve non solo per dividere le orecchie, ma anche per connettere i neuroni, cioè per far funzionare la mente. Ho mandato anche una richiesta alla Presidenza del Consiglio perché ci sia nei territori la presenza dell'esercito. I quartieri vanno militarizzati. C'è un 10% di responsabili che devono essere neutralizzati e messi in condizione di non nuocere. Oggi l'emergenza è bloccare il contagio e da questo punto di vista noi non guarderemo in faccia a nessuno. In Cina un cittadino cinese che era uscito dalla, quarantena, dalla zona che era in quarantena si era buttato con la macchina, aveva travolto anche le forze dell'ordine, facevano il blocco stradale e quant'altro, 23 anni, è stato fucilato. Ora nelle democrazie occidentali non esistono questi metodi terapeutici. Mi arrivano notizie che qualcuno vorrebbe preparare la festa di laurea. Mandiamo i carabinieri, ma li mandiamo con i lanciafiamme. From these videos he made himself known as a good charismatic leader. However, recently some of his associates were caught mishandling government funds and intermeddling with the purchase of uh, respirators and other hospital equipment, probably to cash in in some of taxpayers' money. This can be seen in statistics. Campania is the region that made the fewest number of tests when counted proportionally to the population, and many of the doctors and nurses working in hospitals during the crisis had to bring their own equipment from home, like masks and gloves, which is very suspicious. I have very strong opinions on De Luca, so here it goes. If it wasn't for the corruption, I would say that De Luca is the right politician in the wrong country. Some world leaders could take example from De Luca's lockdown. On the other hand, I think he's too sketchy and too authoritarian to be in power. For these reasons, I'm not going to vote for him at the regional elections of Campania this month. Luckily for me, the other candidates are not that bad. Stefano Caldoro from Forza Italia seems very promising. He's the guy that almost fixed the economy five years ago. And Valeria Charambino from Five Stars is also alright at redeeming qualities being not being De Luca. Unfortunately, judging by the recent polls and predictions, I doubt that De Luca will lose this time. He sadly won the hearts of the majority with strict action and humor. To this day, De Luca is still talking about closing everything again, which is just insane to me, but I guess that's just how it goes. What do you think about De Luca? Do you actually like him? Let me know in the comments below. See you next time.